The Power of Wind. When I'm sailing here on a beautiful ship like this, on, on a day like this, this is my favorite place to be on the planet. The wind that we feel in the sails now is sufficient to provide electricity to every household in Holland. One of the things I would really like to see is more of the world being powered by wind power. Giant wind farms are the fastest growing energy source on Earth. And Hub den Ruijen is the architect of one of the biggest. This wind farm is very much uh, state of the art. Is the combined effort of a large team of people working for many years to get Holland's first offshore wind farm off the ground. This monumental feat of engineering begins on dry land. Transporting the turbine blades from the factory requires a military style operation. Each blade is 140 feet of epoxy and carbon fiber, nearly half the length of a football field. When I grew up, wind turbines were you know, small machines that you would find in a farmer's backyard and that would supply enough power for the farm. In the late 90s, people were talking about wind turbines of a megawatt. Well, a megawatt of wind power is basically enough to give electricity to hundreds and hundreds of homes. And I thought that was a great concept. That was a vision that inspired me. To work in one of the world's stormiest seas, the crews need a stable platform. The ship Sea Energy has four legs that descend 70 feet to the seabed. It takes a solid rock mooring to lift hundreds of tons of steel. You're looking at some of the largest wind turbines that are ever being built on the planet. Nearly 100 feet of the turbine is sunk into bedrock beneath the sea floor. Another 70 feet is underwater. The remaining 210 feet rises to the sky. You want wind turbines to be big because big is beautiful in this business. It means it's efficient, it's powerful. It means that the turbine is high up in the sky where the wind is strong and the wind is more constant. So the energy is converted more efficiently. That's why wind turbines always have to be very tall. Maneuvering these giant steel towers in the middle of the ocean is dangerous. So far, there have been no accidents, but one slip and everyone on board could be at risk. Never mind four million dollars of custom engineering sent to the bottom of the sea. Because of the risks, they picked a foreman who knows the ocean. Just trying to catch the foundation. It has a lot of swelling at the moment, so the crane, the whole ship is bending. That's why it's dancing a little bit now. Once the tower is aligned with the foundation, the crew tightens the bolts, all 140. Next, a 20-story climb to attach the turbine. 
If all goes well, they can assemble the whole thing in 24 hours. We have to take care because it's dangerous stuff we are working with here. So everybody has to take care and take a look at what everybody else is doing because sometimes it's going a little bit quickly, so you have to be aware. On a calm day, the turbines go together like clockwork. But in the North Sea, the weather is fickle. The Dutch uh, winters can be uh, pretty severe. We can have some, uh, some high gales. We've had 14 meter waves during the construction phase already, and these turbines have not been harmed. The North Sea is famed for its fury. But bad weather is why they're here. As warm winds from the Gulf Stream collide with frigid Arctic air, they produce turbulence, winds blowing up to gale force. As the air hits the turbines, it's the same force as several semi-trucks driving into the blades at full power. Inside the generator, wires spin at high speed through a magnetic field. Result? Electricity. Each turbine can power 3,000 homes. They look pretty simple on the outside. Well, they're about as simple as aeroplanes. Inside the jet engine is very, very high tech. Inside these turbines is equally high tech. Next step, attaching the engine room to the mast. The crane operator must line up his load within millimeters. It's like balancing a semi-truck on four basketballs while buffeted by wind and swell. The final task is the most difficult and dangerous, attaching the third blade to the engine. The crew must perfectly line up all the bolts. Bend a single bolt and the whole turbine will have to be taken apart and hauled back to land. wind farm is complete. Now he can harvest power. It's a project that I've been working on for the last six years and to finally see it here complete is fantastic and I'm really very very proud. One day Wind could power all of Holland, 